Okay, so at some point, did you have a conversation with World about the murder of Crazy Troy? Not necessarily right then, but after I was released from prison. Okay, and what was that conversation? I had, it was being avoided for obvious reasons. Like I said, the relationship between me and eBay at the time was strained because he had stated to someone in my family that I had better not mention his name. So when I came home, it was, you know, if they was related to me, so I hadn't seen them. So it was like avoidance. When I finally did get to speak with him, I remember him saying to me, Objection, who is him? Please explain who you're talking about now. World. When I finally saw him, I remember him explaining to me that Troy had to go. He was describing how he was mentally off and how dude was going to try to use him to basically assault someone on the team. And did you have an understanding based on your participation in the drug dealing from CMB and other activities as to what, if any, effect killing somebody who you have on your status within the group? It would definitely make lift the individual status up in that organization. In fact, did you observe anything about eBay's status after the murder of Crazy Troy? Yes. What was that? I mean, he was more revered as an individual who would get the job done. When World said to you that Troy had to go, what did you understand that to mean based on your... that he had to die? You went... Now, so that was in December of 1992? Eventually, you went to state prison, is that correct? Yes. And that was on the charges? I guess it was on the robbery charge, is that right? You've been on bail for that? Yes. And how long were you sentenced to at that point? Two to four. Okay, so do you remember what year you got out in from that? Ninety-five. And where did you go when you got out? To Lafayette Gardens. Do you remember where you lived at that time when you were released? Yes, sir, 456. At some point, did you move to Queens? Come again? At some point, did you move to Queens? Yes, sir. When was that? Probably a year after I was home. Okay, and when you came home, where was Wise? When I first came home, Wise was hustling upstate New York. And was... Who was selling if anybody in Lafayette Gardens hustling? There was a slew of individuals, but I knew that World was the one controlling. And when you say control, what does that mean to you as far as drug deals goes? I came home from prison, and I remember seeing him, and he was basically... He didn't explain to me verbatim that he was controlling the projects, but through casual conversation when we were just talking, and at the time he had on a lot of jewelry and nice clothes, and I recall asking him to give me some money, and he laughed, and he said to me, you don't fuck with me like that, excuse my language, and I was shocked, you know, because I mean, I've known him for a long time. I didn't expect that reaction from him, but it wasn't out of any type of malice because what he did was he took his phone out and he said, hold on a second. And he started dialing the number and I'm standing there bewildered, wondering what he is doing. What does this have to do with me asking you for a couple of dollars and you're telling me no. And he gets on the phone and he goes, yeah, talk to your boy. And he passes me the phone and I say, who was this? And it was wise. And what happened with Wise that day? Oh, he was very excited about the fact that I had came home and told me to stay where I was at. He was coming to pick me up. I didn't realize that he was in way upstate New York at the time, so I was standing in front of the projects for three to four hours. So what happened? He came, he picked me up, and immediately we jumped on the road. We're talking and reminiscing, and the next thing I know, I'm seeing the highway, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm taking you to where I hustle at. I said, I'm on parole. I got to report to parole. He was telling me it's Friday, man. You ain't got to report until Monday. So he basically took me upstate with him. Okay, did you go back to Lafayette Gardens then? Yes. Okay, and what did you do when you went back to Lafayette Gardens for money? 
From time to time, I would get up with wives. At that time, I was doing my own thing as far as robberies and burglaries and things like that. So I wasn't, I didn't have any connection with wives on the hustling side at that time. Did you see people selling drugs in Lafayette Gardens? Yes. Who was that? There were younger guys in the projects at that time. It wasn't the same old regiment of dudes like Popsy or eBay or Boo and those guys. It was the next generation of guys coming up that were actually selling drugs. Did you know what, if any, role world had in that drug dealing? Everybody was. Your Honor, I'm going to object because he's not a part of it. I think it's too general a question. Okay. Well, during that time, did you spend time with the drug dealers in Lafayette Gardens? Yes, I did. Did you see what they were doing? Yes. And did you also speak to World during that time? I spoke with him generally. And based on, did you get involved in the drug dealing at Lafayette Gardens? No, when I got involved with the drug dealing myself, like I said, me and Wise were very close friends. And there was a time when World actually got locked up. What, if any, role did you take on when World got locked up? Well, once World got locked up, it was obvious to everyone that Wise would be the one to take over in his steed. Is that something that had happened before? Yes. Was there any pattern to the change in leadership? Faintly, because like I said, a lot of these guys were World's peers. For Wise, they were more so younger guys. What was the interaction between them? If World wasn't there, what would happen? Well, the same guys would answer to Wise. How about when Wise wasn't there? Vice versa. So you said that at some point World got locked up. Who took charge of the drug dealing? Wise. I don't mean to interrupt, but could we have a year? Wait a second. It's an objection. Overruled. If you know who took over. Okay. Okay, and do you remember about when this was? Not exactly. You were involved in the conspiracy to kill Michael Cullen, correct? Yes. That was at the roller skating rink? Yes. Was this before or after or during the period that you were involved in that conspiracy? This was like in the beginning more so. You mean it was before? Yes. All right. And during that time, can you explain what, if any, role you took on in the drug dealing? Around that time, my job, Wise, he would pay individuals to travel with him to see the connect. That's the supplier for the cocaine. Once there, the individual that he'd take with him would catch a cab and transport the drugs back to Lafayette Gardens. I used to be with him every day when he came to the projects. And it got to the point where he just said, you know what, instead of me paying somebody else to do it, why don't you just do it? So I decided to do it. And Wise would pay you to do that for him? Yes, sir. And during that time, did you take on any other role in the drug dealing? It wasn't like I took on a new role. I mean, all throughout our friendship, Wise was an individual who I was able to call on if I needed him. So in turn, whenever he needed me, I was there for him. If he ever had a situation dealing with any type of confrontation with different individuals, I would be the guy that he would come to. Okay, and how about, did you ever assist, if at all? Well, did you ever know of any of the workers for WISE to have problems during their drug dealing? I remember a time where, excuse me, repeat that question again? Sure, the workers for WISE, were you ever asked to get involved with them, if at all? Yes, yes. How so? Wise had given out. The business was so rampant at the time that he had to break it up in shifts. So, but some shifts were better than others. And you had some guys who would take a shift, but being that they wouldn't make as much money as the next individuals on an earlier shift, wouldn't be out there as much as they were supposed to. And Wise's thing was to call me and have me go and check to see where the individual was at and make sure that they were where they were supposed to be and on their shift. Okay, do you know what phrase messing up the money is? Yes. What does that mean to you? 
when someone doesn't bring back all of the money that they're supposed to. From that, with a crack cocaine sale, did you ever get involved in any situations concerning people messing up money? Not particularly money. There was a time where Wise was approached by a young kid one day. We were standing in the park and the kid walked up and said to Wise, he wanted to speak to him about DJ. So they engaged in a conversation and the kid explained that DJ had been stealing crack from Wise. So Wise was, he didn't understand what the kid was saying. Like, what do you mean he's stealing from me? He said, when you pay him to bag up, he's taking some of the crack and putting it to the side. And then he is making me sell it. And the kid was about 14, 15 years old. And he said he didn't really know what he was doing when DJ approached him. So ultimately he wound up losing the drugs and DJ was pressing him about the drugs, about how he wanted his money back. So the kid realized in order for him to get out of the situation, the best thing was to do was to let Wise know that DJ had been stealing from him. And did you... Now, this is later, correct? This is around the time that Wise was killed? No, no, no. This was probably a year or two before. Okay, and so what did you do to DJ? Well, Wise basically told me the alternative was him seriously, seriously getting hurt or me beating him up, so I elected to beat him up. And you did beat him up? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you just a few pictures. First is Government Exhibit 9 in evidence. Who is that? Sambo. And did you know who Sambo during the time period around 1998 when Michael Cullen was killed, what Sambo was doing, if anything, with drugs? I can't recall exactly. Okay, did you know Sambo to be... Were there some people closer to World and some people closer to Wise? Yes, Sambo was an individual who grew up closer to Wise's age. They were more peers than how Sambo and... Sambo was more of a peer to Wise than he was to World. He was older than World. How about that individual? Who is that? That's Government Exhibit 10. Jimbo. Jimbo? Yes. How about Jimbo? Who was his relationship with if there was a difference between World and Wise? His... Initially, Jimbo was real close to World. To Wise, I mean. But him and World had a very good relationship. And how about Government Exhibit 11? Who is that? Tion. All right, and what about him as between World and Wise? From my perception, he was just a younger guy that used to be around his younger... Speaking of Wise, he was a guy that used to be around his younger brother. When I came home from prison is when I met Tion. I didn't know Tion until I came home from state prison the first time. Did you know anything about whether or not he was part of CMB? Yes, sir. Do you know he was or not? Yes, he was. Okay, and what, if any, role did he play in CMB? What did he do? I remember him selling drugs. I remember him carrying firearms and shooting, things like that. Okay, how about Jimbo? Was he part of CMB? Yes, sir. What, if any, role, what did he do as a part of CMB? His role was primarily that of like an accountant. Wise and World entrusted him with their money because he was an individual who was straightforward. You didn't have to worry about whether he was going to play games with your money. A very quiet, reserved individual. Someone they both depended on. And how about Sambo? What, if anything, did he do? There was a time when Sambo himself was an individual who had a very wild reputation in the projects. Once while I was in prison, a situation transpired where a young man was murdered and the word was that Sambo had snitched on some individuals, so his standing in the projects wasn't as solid as it was when I had previously known him. Specifically within CMB, what would it do to your reputation if someone was considered to be a snitch? Alienated? I mean, I've heard talk of what should have been done to him. Your Honor, it's getting a little vague here. Yes, when you say I heard talk, you have to focus on him being more specific than that. So was this, 
and just if you answer yes or no so i can establish the basis did you were these cmb members who were talking about sambo yes do you remember any of the people with specifics that you were talking to about sambo no i just remember conversations in the summertime when everybody was talking about the fact that he had snitched and he couldn't be trusted and shouldn't be allowed to be walking around in the projects okay government exhibit 14 which is in evidence who is that dj that's the individual that you assaulted yes sir you assaulted him for wise yes sir what did dj do if anything as far as criminal activity with cmb at that particular time he was bagging and he was selling i'm going to show you government exhibit 12 which is in evidence who is that carl and was he a part of cmb yes and he grew up with guys in the projects he was more close to my age i didn't really see him hanging out with these guys but i knew he was closely affiliated and what if any criminal activity was he involved in i knew of a particular time where we called him c he had come home from prison and i was the one controlling the drugs in the area for world and world called me and explained to me that he wanted to wanted c to be the one to take over from that particular point okay and what did you do i let him do what he had to do do you remember when that was approximately can you relate it to any of the events that you experienced with cmb this was probably around the time when world came home from prison meaning before or after wise was killed after all right i'm going to focus back now on 1998 during the time again around the time that the roller rink murder happened yes sir can you explain what was going on in terms of the drug activity at lg you had younger guys like i said who were basically at the time it wasn't the shift dynamic it was more so of guys would get what was called a bomb at the time and it was just every man for himself but not in the sense that these individuals selling drugs for themselves these drugs came from one particular source and that source was go ahead was world could somebody who wasn't associated with world at that time sell drugs in LG? no did you ever witness anybody try I've seen instances where guys who didn't know the area and may have heard about how much drugs could be sold in that area try to come in that area, but immediately realized that there was an organization there that wasn't allowing that to happen. Did you ever get involved in informing anybody that they couldn't sell? I never had to. What do you mean by that? Like I said, you had individuals that used to come from different neighborhoods looking to get rid of their drugs in a quick fashion, but when they would get to the projects, they would realize that it was no room for anyone outside of the CMB organization. And they would leave? Yes. In 1998, did you become a blood? Yes, sir. Can you, do you remember the day that you decided to become blood? I remember the day, I couldn't tell you the date, but I remember the day. That's fine. Did you have a conversation with anybody about that on the day you made that decision? Yes, sir. Who is that? World. And where did you talk to World about that? We were standing on the corner of Lafayette and Clausen in front of the rent building attached to Lafayette Gardens. Looking at the map, where was that? Lafayette and Clausen. Okay, so you were standing there. What was the was anybody else talking with you or was it just you and world there was other people around but i just remember me and him speaking okay and what was the conversation what do you remember about the conversation he brought up to me the fact that there were a lot of young guys who were under the impression that he was what the bloods call a big homie he had did a stint on rikers island so some guys who had been on rikers island during the time that he was there seemed to have been under the impression that he was a high-ranking member of the blood organization and that word started fluctuating around and he didn't deny it he would laugh about it 
And that particular day we were standing there, we were talking and I remember him expressing to me that these young dudes is willing to do anything to be part of this organization. Okay. And did World express anything about that then? Yes, he explained his plan to me about, because initially I told him, I said, listen, I don't want to be part of no gang. That's corny. And he was like, well, you're not going to be part of a gang. You know, we just going to act like we, they want to put me in that position saying I'm the big homie, saying that the phrase was what's called 101. So it's 101, 102 to 103. 101 being the highest ranging, 102 being second in command. He said to me, they think I'm the big homie, so I'm going to make you my 102. And what's going to happen is these dudes is going to fall in line and blindly just be obeying commands. And what was, what did you say in response to that? I thought it was a hell of a plan. I agreed to it. And did you and World decide whether or not you would have to do anything to be a blood? Yeah, at that time, it was well known that I object to what was well known. Yes, objection sustained. Okay, let me ask you this. Generally speaking, what was your understanding that someone had to do at that time to become part of the Bloods? I think that's the same question. Well, I think he can answer that. Was there a general understanding that you had at that time as to what somebody needed to do to become a member of this gang? at that time this is your own knowledge what you understood at that time it was known that to be initiated into the bloods organization if you are a man you had to commit some act of violence whether it was a robbery assault a cutting something like that now did you decide you and world decide for yourself that you would have to do some act of violence to now become a blood leader yes one of the things one of the other things was it's called being jumped in where they take a group of individuals and pit them against one person. So they get a group of people who fight someone who wants to be a member of the Bloods? Yes, for 31 seconds. All right. And could you find anybody that wanted to fight you? Well, that was the thing about it. When the younger guys that was around, I had said, well, let them jump me in. And the younger kids, they didn't want to try that. Can you explain just physically what you were like back then, your size? 250. And you used to box, is that right? Yes, sir. And you were an experienced fighter, correct? Yes, sir. All right. What did you end up doing, if anything? World decided... We laughed about it, and there was a guy that walked past, and he was like, you know what, just knock him out. Was that somebody that you knew? It was just an individual I had never saw before. Somebody walking down the street? Yes. What did you do? I knocked him out. Can we have a time frame? I didn't hear you. What is the objection? We just need to know when this was. So the time frame, it is a reasonable request so we know what we're talking about. That's fine, Your Honor. Michael Cullen, you pled guilty to that murder, correct? Yes, sir. And that was in 1998, right? Yes. And was this before the murder of Michael Cullen that this happened? Yes, sir. Did anything else happen as far as the plan to become blood as that went forward? It went through with, you know, assaulting the individual. From that point, he elected a younger kid by the name of Buddha. He being world? Yes. Okay. As another high-ranking official within the organization, he had actually already been blood, but he did what's called, he switched sets at that time. You're talking about Buddha? Yes. When you say a set, that's what? There's different factions within the blood organization. Okay, was there a particular set that you and World decided that you would say you were part of? Yes. What set was that? Sex, money, murder. Were there any other people who joined your set? 
yes popsy tion i knew that big jim was blood but when he came home from prison he was already blood so i didn't know whether he was part of the sex money murder or not how about younger people did you know if any of those people joined under you a lot of the younger guys did okay and when you say younger guys how old are you talking about they were around the age of my nephew, who is approximately 36 at this time, so. What, if anything, did you witness World have the young people do anything like you said, or like he had said before? I mean, a lot of the times they were reporting to him pertaining to blood activity, and I wasn't being present because I didn't really pick up the lingo. Okay, I'm going to now talk about April 15th of 1998 which was the day Michael Cullen was killed. That evening, what were you doing? That evening in front of 456 when I heard of the incident pertaining to World. What was the incident that you learned of? We heard that he had been 86 out of Empire Skating Rink. What does 86 mean? To be aggressively ejected from the club. And based on your understanding at that point, what, if anything, did that do to World's reputation? It was, at that point, it didn't do anything to his reputation because it happened. The consequence to his reputation would have been if he hadn't done anything in retaliation. And what would have been the consequence? I mean, he wouldn't have been looked at as this individual who is known for being a violent individual who controls these projects, who controls these... Based on your experience in the drug trade, what might happen to somebody's drug territory if their reputation slips in that way? Guys from different areas who didn't have the courage to migrate into the projects looking to take over would basically, you know, sense some type of weakness in him and want to move in on the projects. So that evening, did you actually see World? I went upstairs to my apartment. I don't know how long afterwards, after I heard about it, but I had went upstairs to my apartment and it wasn't very long after that my sister informed me that World was at the door. What did you do? I went to the door to find out what he wanted and when I got there I recall him having some abrasions to the face and his shirt was in disarray. What did World say to you, if anything, at that point? I looked at him. I remember looking at him and smiling and he had another individual with him who thought the whole situation was funny and World, he said to me, he said, yo, you heard what happened? You heard what happened? So I said, yeah, you got kicked out the club. He said, yes. So I went to ask him about what happened and he basically didn't want to talk about why he was getting kicked out the club. He was just like, yo, we going back up there. And what, if anything, did he ask you to do? At that particular point, he didn't ask me to do anything. Him coming to get me, I knew he wanted to go and get violent, but when we were standing there and I'm telling him to give me some information about what was happening and the other individual who was standing there laughing, he was telling the guy, he was like, you think it's funny? He was like, watch when we get there. Watch my son beat the shit out this dude. Excuse my language. Okay, and at that point, what did you do? I got myself ready and said, let's go. And what, if anything at all, did World's role in CMB have to do with that decision, if anything? It had a lot to do with it. It had a lot to do with it, and more so, not even just the fact that he was the head of CMB. I know him. He's my friend, you know, and this is my best friend's little brother. So what happened next? I remember we got on the elevator. I don't remember the conversation that we were having. It wasn't too serious. We were laughing and giggling about it because we were, me and him, were very confident about what we were going to do once we got back to this place. When I got downstairs, when we got off the elevator. And this is where, which building? In the building 456. When you got downstairs, is that in the lobby? Yes. What happened? There were other individuals standing downstairs who had witnessed him coming to the building that knew that he was coming to get me, so they were waiting on him to come downstairs. Whether their intention was to get involved or not, or just be nosy, I don't know, 
but I remember there was a young kid there at the time who was a member of the blood organization. Do you know what's set? Who is this person? What did you call him? His name was Tuki. Do you know what set Tuki was a part of? He was part of sex money murder. That's your set, is that right? Yes. What, if anything, did you see happen with Tuki then? Him and World went off to the side and had a brief conversation, and then Tuki went towards the elevator and World came back over to me and the individual that he had came to my apartment with and explained that Tuki was going to get what's called a hammer, which is a firearm. And what was your understanding at that point that World told you about the gun? At that particular time, he was like, he's going to get the firearm to just hold me down in case, you know, things got out of hand. But I realized at that point that it was chances that it was going to be more than just a fight. Okay, so what did you do? Did Tuki come back downstairs? Yeah, in approximately 10 to 15 minutes, he came back down. And what happened? We left the building. The individual that World was with had a vehicle at the time, an early model Buick, I think it was. When you say early model, you mean old or new? Old car. Old car, okay. Yes. So go ahead. And we got in the vehicle. I don't remember any much of the conversation. Do you remember where everybody was sitting? I was, World was in the passenger seat. The front passenger seat? Yes. Okay. I was behind him. His friend was driving and Tuki was behind him. To your left? Yes. All right. So what happened on the way to the... Well, did you know you knew where you were going at that point? Yes, I did. What happened on your way there? I don't really recall what happened on the way there. I just recall when we pulled up on Empire. What, if anything, do you remember during the drive talking about on the way there? Well, when we pulled up, we started trying to get an understanding as to what exactly we were going to do. And I was saying that I was going to get out of the vehicle and World was giving a description of the guy that who had initiated the assault on him. Okay, and did you hear World say anything else at that point? Yes, he got into a conversation with Tuki and he started explaining to Tuki exactly where he wanted him to shoot the individual. What did he say? I remember him telling him that he didn't want him to kill him. He said, he's like, yo, remember, don't kill him. Just shoot him around in here. By here, you're gesturing to the center of your chest? Yes. Okay, and did you have a reaction to that? Yeah, me and the guy that was driving, we looked at each other and he was looking at me, giving me a look like, I need to know what was going on in your mind at that point, as opposed to the other guy. If he didn't want to kill the guy, he could have picked a different place for him to get shot because in the sternum area seemed like a very vital place to shoot someone if you're not going to kill him. What did you do at that point? I said, let me get out the vehicle and go down here and look and see if I see the dude. If I see the dude, I'm just going to pop on him, which is assault him. How did you know who you were looking for? He had gave a general description. Who is he? World. And what did you do at that point? I got out the vehicle. I remember walking past the place and there was still people fluctuating in the vestibule of the establishment. Can you just briefly describe what the place you were walking by just looked like? What would you see if you were walking by it? When I got there, it was like the police saw horses out in the so there were doors and then the police saw horses you were making like a v motion exactly pointing towards the doorway okay and when i walked past the doorway there wasn't too many people standing outside but there was one door then there's an area and then there was magnometers that you have to as you're walking in there's an outer door a vestibule 
you described and then an inner door? Yes. All right, so go ahead. So when I walked past, I seen a lot of people standing in between where the front door was and the magnometer was, so I couldn't distinguish the individual that he had described to me. So what did you do at that point? So I went back to the vehicle and I had told him that I didn't see the person. When you went back to the vehicle, who was in the car? The same individuals. So three people in the car? Yes. Okay, so World Tuki and the driver? Yes. All right, and when you went back to the car, did you get in the car or did you, what did you do? I went to the vehicle and I leaned in the window. All right, what did you say? When I got to the window, they was deep in conversation and I said I didn't see the dude. I can't remember exactly what he said, but when you say he, who are you talking about? World. Okay, so what was the substance of what he told you? I had walked up in the conversation that these three individuals was having. I didn't really grasp everything that they were saying. I came in the middle of the conversation. I basically said, yo, I don't see the person you describing. Some more words was exchanged. I don't recall, but I do remember me deciding that I was going to go back one more time and look to and take a better look. Okay, and what was your intent if you saw this person that world described? I was going to beat him up. Okay, so what happened then? Did you go back again? Yes, I did. And what did you do? I went past. When I came back past the second time, I didn't just walk past it. I think I went across and around, so now I'm coming because I didn't want to keep walking back and forth just looking inside the place. So I figured I would come from the other side and walk towards the car as I'm walking towards the direction of the vehicle. Do you remember what side the roller rink was on based on where you were walking? It was on my left hand side. Okay, and you were walking towards where the car had been? Yes, which is parked on the left hand side as well. All right, and as you were walking, what did you see? As I'm getting closer to the front of the establishment, I see Tuki and he's a couple of feet ahead of me, so he actually gets to the entrance of the door before I does. Can I ask you, was Tuki walking in the same direction as you or towards you? He was walking towards me. All right, from the direction that the car was? Yes. All right, and then what happened? As I spotted him, recognition is dawning on me, and I realized that it is him, and that's when I seen him point the firearm in towards the doorway of the establishment. What did you see next? He fired a weapon. How far away do you recall Tuki being from the doorway when he shot? He wasn't close. He was probably... Well, let me ask you this. Was Tuki... There was the roller rink, the sidewalk, and the road, correct? Yes. Was he in the road or on the sidewalk? He was on the sidewalk. And do you remember what portion of the sidewalk? He was in the middle of the sidewalk, but that particular sidewalk is wide. Okay, and what happened after Tuki shot? Do you remember how many times he shot? I don't. What happened after he shot? A lot of people started running. I seen somebody drop something. Tuki ran past me. I seen that what the person dropped was a cell phone. I bent down and I picked up the cell phone and I stood there for a second as if trying to be inconspicuous as if I wasn't with the individual who just fired and while he ran that way I proceeded to go the other way towards the car. Do you remember what you were wearing at that time? I had on an Avrex jacket. Do you remember anything about the coloring? I thought the sleeves and the torso of the jacket were two different colors. Which direction did you run in then? I ran back towards the vehicle. You ran towards where the car was? Yes. Keeping the roller rink on your left hand side? Yes. What happened? Did you make it back to the car? Yes, I did. And who was in the car when you got back there? World and his friend. 
what happened when you got there? We got in the car and they didn't want to go back in the direction that we, I had just come from. So the guy did a U-turn in the middle of the street. The corner was directly behind us. So once he made the U-turn, he went up Bedford Avenue. And as he was going up Bedford Avenue, by this time I had explained to him where I seen Tukey running. So when we got to the next corner, he told the guy to stop to see that if he could see Tukey. So the guy was complaining to him that he wanted to get off the scene. I'm sorry, but do you remember whether you were inside the car or outside the car when that conversation happened? The argument about, did you see him? I was inside the car. And was World and the other man in the car as well? Yes. Okay, so what happened then? And we got to the next the very next intersection and slowed down and looked up the block and sure enough Tukey was running up the block and he got inside the vehicle. Where did you go? To the projects. Do you remember where you went after that night? Did you all get out of the car together? Did Tukey get out first? Did you drop him off anywhere? Can you explain that? Me and Tukey got out at the projects and he went his way and I went mine. Did you speak with World after that? Yes. Do you remember how long after the murder you talked to him? It was probably a day or two. I spoke with World and he had some concerns because Tukey had been running around telling people, I mean a lot of people, he heard about the shooting at Empire and Tukey had committed this act to boost himself in the blood organization so it really didn't mean anything to do it and not have anybody know about it so he was bragging about it a lot. Okay, and what if anything did World say about that? He was very concerned about it, the fact that the kid was running around bragging about it. He felt that the kid needed to be dealt with, and I asked him at that particular time what did he expect, like, you know, me talk to the kid, and he was like, do whatever you gotta do. And what did you understand that to mean, do whatever you gotta do? That if he wouldn't stop talking about this shooting, that I would have to silence him. So what did you do? I went downstairs to the 15th floor where I spoke with Keith and... 15th floor of what building? 456. And Keith had heard about it as well. And Keith was basically saying the best way to do it is just to get rid of him. And at that particular time, Keith had the firearm at his house. Let me interrupt you. This is Government Exhibit 6 in evidence. Mr. Amitrata, might this be a good time? It is five o'clock to complete the testimony today and pick it up tomorrow morning? Yes, I think it's a great time, Judge. I have about two questions and this is the end of this segment. Two questions and then it will be a logical time to quit. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So this is Keith, correct? Yes. Was he a member of CMB? Yes. And he had a gun in his apartment? Yes. And what did you do? We took the firearm, got in the elevator, and went downstairs because they said that Tukey was downstairs and he was about to go to court and there was some speculation that he might go to court talking about what happened, anything like that. So we wanted to see if we were going to have to talk to him or have to deal with him. Did you get a chance to talk to him or deal with him? Well, when we got downstairs, he had an entourage with him because he was expecting to be remanded in court. So he had like three or four people with him. So when we got downstairs, I recall looking at Keith and I shook my head and he was like, what? I said, no, I ain't fucking around with that. Because there were too many people there? Yeah. And did you ever see Tukey again after he left? No, we talked, and rather than come at him with physical violence, I pulled him to the side and I told him about hearing that he had been bragging about what had been done and told him that wasn't a good look. And, you know, he conceded to where I was coming from and he said he wasn't going to talk about it no more. And he went to court and I didn't see him again until I seen him in prison. That's all I have. Thanks, Judge. All right, fine. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We are getting towards the end. All rise.